Thank you, Senator Lazarus. Senator Seward. Thank you, um, Mr. President. Um, and I would like to rise to contribute to the debate on this bill. And of course, um, as our leader, Senator Milnes, has articulated, the Greens will be and are opposed to the repeal of the carbon package, believing that this is the future of our country. It depends on us addressing the most uh, biggest emergency that we are facing, which is the climate change emergency. This package of legislation that this chamber passed not that long ago did set Australia on the path to addressing climate change, and it's a sad day. When, it'll be a sad day when this repeal bill goes through, and future generations will look back and say, "What did you do? What did you do to this country when you repealed this legislation?" And they will condemn this place for that action. This legislation takes us backwards. As I said, future generations will condemn us. The world is facing a climate emergency. And while this government tries to confect a budget emergency, they lose sight of the fact that we are facing a climate emergency, both in this country, our neighbours, and uh, globally, we are facing a, a, a climate emergency. The coalition wants you to ignore the fact that climate is having an increasing impact on our lives. It's not something that we can just say it will impact on us in the future. It is impacting on us now. And just ask the population of Kiribati whether they think climate change is real. I don't think they'd be searching around and buying land elsewhere if their homes weren't literally washing away. The coalition likes to ignore the science, but it's irresponsible to jeopardise the future of this planet, the future of its peoples and of its species. And you'd hear Senator Macdonald in this chamber last night trying to paint the picture that climate change doesn't, isn't occurring. And he likes to mess, mess around with quotes on the science. And he misquoted the UK uh, Met Bureau in terms of saying that, and quoting media that was spinning the UK Met uh, Bureau's results. And saying that it had been the, trying to imply that, that the temperature hadn't risen for the last 16 years. I do note that that particular article quoted the scientists about uh, the period of time that, of climate they were talking about, and then put dot dot dot, and then um, went on to uh, put other quotes in place. In other words, um, not telling the full story. And when I went and actually looked at what. The UK Met Office actually said about that particular uh, piece of uh, quotes. They said, as we stressed before, choosing a starting or end point on short term scales can be very misleading. Looking at successive decades over this period, each decade was warmer than the previous, so that the 90s were warmer than the 80s and the, zero and the 2000s were warmer than both. Eight of the top Ten warmest years have occurred in the last decade, and it goes on from there. So, when you're quoting quotes, Senator Macdonald and members of the coalition, make sure you're quoting them in context. There's other misquotes that he made last night that I will uh, address later. The uh, action on climate change this decade is critical absolutely critical if we are to protect our oceans, our environment, our agriculture and our children's and grandchildren's future. The most effective and most affordable way to reduce our emissions is to have a price on pollution, is to have a market mechanism like the one contained in the Clean Energy Act and the package of bills that went through this place not that long ago, and which this government ably assisted by the Palmer Party 
is in now rushing to destroy, again to be condemned by future generations. This government is clearly determined to assist business to wring every last drop of profit out of the fossil fuel dinosaur industry while they condemn and put every obstacle in the way of clean green energy such as or the renewable energies such as the type of industry and developments that both Senator Milne and Senator Ludlam were talking about yesterday where we have in fact now cities in Australia competing to see to who can be the first to put in solar thermal that's the sort of industry that we should be putting in place now not more fossil fuel developments. Without a price on pollution, Australia has no effective action to reduce emissions, and we will increase the burden of climate change on everyone and everything in our world. In all the portfolios, in fact, that I have, I can think of situations for all, in all, across all of my portfolios getting worse under climate, uh, with an increasing climate emergency. Our farmers. And particularly mine in Western Australia who are already feeling the impacts of climate change. Our marine life, our first people living in um, low-lying areas in the Torres Straits and remote Australia are just a few examples. It is time to listen to the people of Australia who know our country is facing an enormous threat, and that is climate change. That threat made worse because of the dinosaur policies of the coalition government. If you look at some of the other comments that were made again last night, for example, by Senator Macdonald on the Scott Reef, where he was, uh, as I said, misquoting um, scientists yet again and implied that uh, the uh, Scott Reef, uh, the scientists that were, were looking at the um, impact uh, of the, some of the destruction of the coral reefs up there, were um, denying climate change. You only have to look at the comments that were made to realise that, in fact, our coral reefs are in severe trouble from climate change. And I just don't understand why people would seek to continue to deny climate change and realise I don't understand when they don't when they don't take into account the impact that climate change is going to have on their descendants on their grandchildren, on their children, on their great-grandchildren, who will perhaps never be able to see a functional intact coral reef. And yes, there are plenty of other impacts on coral reefs, such as overfishing and pollution, but climate change and ocean warming and, and ocean acidification is having a devastating impact on our remaining coral reefs. And another, if, if Senator Macdonald last night had quoted some more of what the scientists from Ames were saying about Scott Reef. They said, while it is encouraging to see such clear recovery, we need to be mindful of the fact that, the, that coral recovery at Scott Reef still took over a decade. If, as the climate change suggests, we start to see coral bleaching and other related disturbances occurring more frequently, then reefs may experience a ratcheting down effect, never fully recovering before they suffer another major disturbance. Clearly, our marine life is coming under increased threat, and its ability to adapt is being diminished over time, the longer we delay action. 30 per cent of the carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere is ultimately absor abs absorbed by the ocean, a process that results in our seas becoming more acidic. And research just released a couple of months ago on Papua New Guinea's coral reefs, um, a, a conducted by the James Cook Coral Centre of Excellence and, the, and AIMS, the Australian Institute of Marine Science and the Georgia Institute of Technology and National Geographic Society, um, many august, these august organisations, found that fish are losing their survival instinct, even becoming attracted to the smell of their predators. Fish also swim further from shelter and are more active. Fish appear to have failed to adapt to being exposed to higher levels of carbon dioxide. Clearly, we can't just expect our environment to take blow after blow and still continue to bounce back. Clearly, uh, increased carbon dioxide levels are having impacts beyond what we even thought uh, it could, could have, with changing even the behaviour of fish in terms of 
um, and, and its terms of its impact on the natural environment, we still don't know all of those impacts. Last summer in Perth, for those West Australians who were in Perth at the time, no, it was very hot. We had some of our hottest days on record, and we've had day after day where temperatures rose above 40 degrees. For some, it was easy enough to turn up the air conditioning, but for a lot of people, it was an enormously stressful time. Mother, among other things, these prolonged hot periods are responsible for a rise in the number of heat-related deaths. The greatest impact is on our most frail, most vulnerable and elderly. And elderly. But also low-income households are feeling the pressure because those who are the most worst off in our community are unable to just switch on the air conditioner as some other people do and try and pretend that climate change doesn't exist. The clean energy package that the Greens uh, negotiated compensated low-income families for these short-term increases. It was a fair package that took into account how those who are, in fact, at the lowest end of the income uh, stream, who find it the hardest to adapt and, uh, to these uh, changing circumstances. Often they live in rented houses that can't afford to be retrofitted. This package helped compensate people to enable them to um, deal with the, in, um, the price on carbon. We need to be moving now, not delaying our response to some far-off date into the future. It is time that we, Australia woke up to the fact that this is, climate change is here, it is real, it is impacting on our lives now. We need to be taking action now. We need to be looking at how, what changes we make now, how it impacts on people into the future. Those that are living in poverty, single parents, older Australians, were helped and are helped by this package. They were compensated. And what do you think the impact into the future is going to be as climate change really does kick in? It's too late then to say, oh, perhaps we should have taken some action in the past. Who is going to compensate those people that are affected this way? This government isn't interested in our, how our poorest families will cope. We know that they don't care about the most vulnerable people in our country. Otherwise, they wouldn't be dumping young Australians onto no income support at all. They wouldn't be introducing their cruel budget measures. So to so cry crocodile tears now that a price may adversely impact on pensioners, on single parents, on our other most vulnerable members of our community are really crocodile tears. They don't care. Their budget clearly articulates that. It clearly picks on single parents three cuts in the budget to single parents alone. It deeply affects older Australians, ripping $80 to $100 per week off them into the future. It clearly impacts on people with disabilities, dumping them off DSP onto Newstart and, as I said, dumping young people off onto no income support. So don't pretend you care about the most vulnerable people and don't use them as an excuse to dump action on climate change because that's what you're doing. You're using the most vulnerable in our community to dump action on climate change. And then, of course, we've got direct action, which is direct inaction or indirect no action would be a better title for that particular package. High cost, narrow, government-controlled scheme intent, intended to replace the existing market-driven, economy-wide, lowest cost method of reducing harmful greenhouse emissions. There is simply no comparison between indirect inaction and the market mechanism and the package the clean energy package delivers. It is not a viable replacement for carbon pricing and is vastly inferior to the existing law. Direct action is very expensive. It will be a white elephant. 
There, it's just laughable to imagine that you can replace the comprehensive package that is in place now with direct action, which will see go back to the bad old days of ill-placed plantations, ill-founded plantations, streamlining and planting a few trees. The abolition of the clean energy package and the implementation of direct action will lead to a $22 billion de de uh, deterioration in the budget position. When we stop and consider this, this, it becomes obvious how reckless the government is being economically as well as with our future, the future of our planet, the future of our community and the future of our plant and animal species. In their mad rush to squeeze every last dollar out of the old dinosaur fuels, this government leaves a huge cost for our children and our future generations to pay instead. This budget emergency is a confected panic designed to justify unbelievably harsh and unfair cuts to our most vulnerable, while I then ignore the, the planet emergency and the climate emergency.